outstanding waves are really interesting to see. We normally associate waves as moving, but as you saw with this ring when it is in resonance, the waves aren't moving at all, they are simply standing. But they only occur at very specific frequencies and therefore by association specific wavelengths. Now I was able to set this up by using this vibration generator. Now this video is sponsored by Science with Matt and Matt was kind enough to donate this generator as well as the ring for this video. More about what he offers at the end. Now I plan to use this to deepen our understanding of de Broglie's contribution to the understanding of the atom which led to a radical shift on how we view matter. Stay tuned. Now in 1913, Niels Bohr made a surprising claim about the structure of the atom that helped usher in the age of quantum physics. Only a few years before, it was Ernest Rutherford who proposed the model of the atom which consisted of electrons in orbit around the nucleus. Now we often refer to this as the planetary model of the atom and it's the most common model that you've probably seen in textbooks. But there was a major flaw. According to James Clerk Maxwell, accelerating electrons should emit electromagnetic radiation. Now, since Rutherford's electrons are undergoing circular motion, they're actually accelerating and thus should be losing energy. But that would mean a spiral of death. They would spiral into the nucleus and that clearly doesn't happen. And that bothered Niels Bohr and he came up with a solution. Now, the idea was that electrons would only exist in very discrete orbits and they would neither gain or lose energy if they stayed in those orbits. And he invoked Einstein's idea of what we now refer to as the photon, that if an electron does change orbit, it would only emit very discrete amounts of energy, where that energy is equal to hf, h being Planck's constant and f being the frequency. And that led him to derive a formula for the angular momentum of the electron. L, which is equal to mvr, is equal to n times h over 2 pi. So do you see the n there? Well, those are integers. And therefore, what that is saying is that the angular momentum can only have very discrete whole numbers of specific values, obviously multiples of Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Now, I actually discussed this further in another video specifically on Niels Bohr, so check that out. But what Bohr wasn't able to do was to say why these orbits can only have discrete values. And this is where Louis de Broglie steps in. In 1923, de Broglie believed that if light could have both wave and particle-like properties, why could not matter? And in this case, the electron would not only have particle-like properties, but also wave-like properties. Now, this brings us to the idea of the standing wave. Now, standing waves is the condition where waves are interfering so as to produce what appears to be a stationary wave. And we say the system is in residence. Now, what that means is for a very specific length condition, so it could be the length of a string, or in our case, the length of this loop, you can only have discrete or integer values of the wavelength. Now, I do have a couple of videos that specifically cover standing waves and resonance, so check them out, the links in the description below. So what did de Broglie suggest? Well, if an electron can be acting as a wave, why can't it be as a standing wave in resonance? And since the electrons are in orbit and therefore have a specific circumference defined by the radius, the circumference has a specific size and that of course is 2 pi r. And what that means is basically only very specific wavelengths, whole number of wavelengths, will actually occur in resonance around the orbit and you will not get it for anything else. So in this particular demonstration, our ring represents our electron orbit and therefore we can actually cause it to be in resonance, but we can only do this at very specific frequencies. So let me turn this on to a frequency that I know is not going to be in resonance. And so I'm going to have this, let's say, at 19 hertz. And so I turn this on. So this pattern suggests here that every part of the ring is moving. What you don't have is any standing wave set up. So this is in chaos for all intents and purposes. In other words, the associated wavelength here is not a whole number of my circumference of the loop. So let's see if I can increase the wavelength by decreasing the frequency. Now this frequency is now 12.4 hertz and you see the two nodes at the three o'clock position and the nine o'clock position. In other words, we have one complete wavelength around the loop. 
In other words, the circumference in this case is actually the length of the wavelength in this situation. And we say this is in resonance. And this is what de Broglie is suggesting. When an electron is in its lowest energy state, is in resonance and therefore not losing or gaining any energy, but it only occurs at this particular wavelength. But of course, there is going to be able to get another one. So let's now increase our frequency. Now I have increased it to 25 hertz. There's a little bit of energy loss, so I can actually tweak it a little bit by going up and down. And so for this string, because of the fact that it's not a perfect system, we're getting actually a frequency that is slightly more than double. But you can see now what we have is four nodal points. And so what we have is two full wavelengths in this particular system. You'll see them roughly at the 10 o'clock position, the two o'clock position, and the eight o'clock position and the roughly four to five o'clock position. What we have is an increased amount of energy. We have an increased amount of momentum and it is a whole number of wavelengths. In this case, we have two wavelengths in this system. Now, ideally, it would be nice to see if I can increase to the next level. In other words, three times the original wavelength, which gives me to a value of about 45 Hertz. I can try this and I don't quite get it here. I have one node up here, one node over here. I have another node here and another node here, and it's similar to what we had before. And that is actually a limitation of this particular model. It's very difficult for this to maintain a higher harmonic. So now what we have is de Broglie's mathematical relationship that ties in the circumference of the loop with discrete numbers of wavelengths. In other words, what we have is two pi r is equal to n lambda. But de Broglie also determined that there was a relationship between the momentum of an electron and the wavelength of that electron. And namely, the wavelength is equal to H, Planck's constant, divided by mv. If you substitute the wavelength there into our previous equation, what we end up getting is 2 pi r is equal to n times h over mv. And if we rearrange that, we get mvr is equal to n multiplied by h over 2 pi. Now, does that look familiar? That is actually the angular momentum equation that Niels Bohr had determined. But now by associating the wavelength or the wave-like properties of the electrons, de Broglie was able to explain why those electrons could have discrete amounts of energy and discrete amounts of angular momentum. And that opened the way for a re-evaluation of the whole nature of matter. Matter did not only have particle-like properties, but it also had wave-like properties, and it could explain the properties of the electrons in orbit. Now, it wasn't soon after de Broglie's paper that Davison and Germer established an experimental evidence to actually demonstrate that electrons can behave with wave-like properties. Again, I have videos where I go into greater detail of de Broglie as well as Davison and Germer's experiment, and I again put those links in the description below, so check them out. Now, this video is sponsored by Science with Matt, and I encourage you to check out his website where he sells a whole variety of scientific equipment, including this vibration generator. Now, this is a very valuable tool, I think, for science teachers. Apart from the ring, which I used to show de Broglie's relationship, you can also attach plates so you can see cladney patterns, and you could also place it under some string so that you can generate linear st standing waves, like just like a guitar. Now, he also provides a number of professional development courses in and around New South Wales if you are locally based. So check him out. Well, I hope that has helped you understand de Broglie a little better. Please like, share and subscribe and put a comment down below if this has been particularly helpful for you. And please consider supporting the work that I do by a regular contribution through Patreon or buying me a coffee. The links are in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.